Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum. I'm here today at the Springfield Armory and National Historic Site, taking a look at some of the particularly rare and interesting firearms in their reference collection. Today we have sort of the, the unloved uh, missing out gun from German late war development, the stuff that eventually led to the H&K line of firearms. This is Gerät 06. Now the story on this goes back to June of 1943, and that's when the Mauser company gets a directive from the German government to work on simplifying the G43 rifle. And specifically, what they want to do is change the G43 from being flapper locked to being roller locked, which is not that substantial of a change. There's also uh, they're also looking at a stamped G43 receiver in place of the milled G43 receiver as it was normally made. So Mauser's tasked with this project, and they divide it into three separate segments, and each one gets its own developmental guns. And these are Gerät 2, 3, and 7, or 02, 03, and 07. And Gerät in German, uh, I believe, translates directly to device. It's essentially their, their testbed experimental projects. So Gerät 02 is just a proof of concept. Can we take the roller locking system and use it in place of the flapper locking system? And the answer was yes, you can do that and it works pretty well. Gerate 03 was taking the G43 and converting it to roller locked by changing production stuff. You know, how would we make a roller locked G43? And then Gerate 07 was, okay, let's say we have carte blanche to redesign this rifle from the ground up. What's our ideal version of a roller, essentially roller locked G43. What else can we simplify? Um, stamped receiver, that sort of thing. So Mauser starts all of these projects and they're going to go in in series because they have to like finalize two before they can really get to work on three and finalize three before they really can get to work on seven. And this starts in the summer of 1943. Now as soon as they realize that this system works, well the Sturmgewehr is also in manufacture, like it, it exists already, the MP43 is a thing, and by the fall of 1943 Mauser is also looking at the possibility of doing a roller locked semi-auto or select fire, actually select fire rifle in 8x33 quarts, the new short cartridge. That becomes Gerait 06, and that is specifically what we are looking at here. So by November of 43, the, the test bed for the, the G43 is done and it works. The Gerate 03, the converted G43 in 8 Mauser, long cartridge, is like 90% done. And Gerate 06 is something like 70% done. They're almost done with it. By February of 44, they've finished this and they've also finished the roller locked G43. And they're starting to do testing on these guns. What they find in testing is really interesting and it is Essentially they haven't really controlled for bolt bounce in these guns, and they discover that if you have a roller locked system and the bolt bounces slightly open right as a round is firing, you essentially get roller delayed blowback. Uh, the gun's not locked closed, but those rollers can take up part of the force of opening and slow down the opening process. Uh, specifically an engineer by the name of Carl Meyer at Mauser notices this in the test bed rifles that they're working on, and realizes that there's potential to exploit this feature, this characteristic, as its own operating system. And he essentially creates roller delayed blowback by, instead of having the gun fully locked, where you've got your rollers coming in uh, braced against flat surfaces where they cannot move until the gas piston opens, instead he's got rollers on angled surfaces where they can start to push in and unlock the moment the gun fires, but that angled surface is going to split the force coming in, and so only some of it pushes the bolt open. Essentially it's roller delayed blowback. Now this isn't particularly interesting on the 8x57 converted G43s because they don't want full auto in those, they're not interested in full auto. Uh, but they're very interested in potentially adapting this Gear 806 to the new roller delayed system, and that becomes known as the Gerait 06H. And by February of 1944, they're starting to experiment with that. So only a couple months after this gun is completed, oh, now there's something better and shinier because the roller delayed blowback version of this thing is lighter, cheaper, simpler, easier to make. 
This has a short stroke gas piston in it. The roller delayed system doesn't need any of that. It's just delayed blowback. So you can just leave out all of the gas system parts at the front. So this gun is still of interest to the German army, and they do testing on it. They put, in total, they make what, uh, the original batch, I believe, is four guns. They get 30,000 rounds through them collectively. They have one gun that gets 12,500 rounds through it. They work really well. Like I said, I've had the chance to shoot one of the, a reproduction of one of these, and it's a fantastically comfortable gun to shoot. It's fairly heavy, gas piston operated, very light cartridge, it's a beautiful gun to shoot. Uh, but it's not as interesting to the Germans as the roller delayed system. So let's take a moment now and take a quick look at this, and I'll show you what I can on it. Unfortunately, uh, this piece is, this is one of the most intact Garate 06s that exists today, and it's missing a bunch of its parts. But I'll show you what I can. Sorry for the interruption, just want to say that today's video is brought to you by Headstamp Publishing. With an extensive catalogue of books on all sorts of interesting and esoteric small arms, everything from World War II small arms, to Imperial Japanese swords, to the earliest of revolvers and Cold War battle rifles, there is something at Headstamp for every firearms enthusiast. Check it out, links in the description text below. Alright, so here is what survives of Garate 06 number 2. And I have put this in here because I want to point out, when you see pictures of the 06s and the 06Hs, you will often see them with these little 10 round magazines. And I think some people have come to, come to believe that this was like the standard intended magazine for this rifle. It was not. These rifles will use, and we're going to, had they ever gone into production, they would have used full size 30 round Sturmgewehr magazines. These little cut down magazines are developmental mags. They're used because it's really easy to put this in the gun when it's on a test stand. It's really hard to get a, like, test stands generally don't accommodate a huge long Sturmgewehr 44 magazine. So that's why you see these little 10 rounders. Anyway, what we have here is a, essentially, a, it's an all stamped receiver. We have a tubular upper section, square lower section. This is the buttstock cap. Unfortunately, the buttstock is missing from this one, and the cap is uh, frozen onto the receiver here, and I don't want to try and pry it off. Normally, your disassembly would be you pull the pin here, take the end cap off, and then the grip assembly pivots down. It's riveted right there, like a Sturmgewehr. You have a three position selector on these. They got rid of the Sturmgewehr split safety and selector. So on the Sturmgewehr you have a, a semi and full auto button, and then you have a safe and a fire button, and you use both of them independently. Here, D is full auto, Dauerfeuer, E is Einzelfeuer, semi auto, and S is safe. Magazine release. We have a heat shield around here. This is where you would actually hold the gun. This is a material that the Germans called Tufnol, or Tufnol, uh, that is linen uh, impregnated with resin. So not Bakelite, not plastic, linen and resin. That's out there. Now the way you can tell the 06Hs from the 06s is the 06Hs, the roller delayed guns, have fully cylindrical hand guards out here. The gas operated one has this sort of squished down flat sided hand guard, and has a removable cover on top because we have a gas system inside. So this was originally designed with a little opening here, and you would put the tip of a cartridge in there to pry it open. I'm going to do that with a punch. This is always a little nerve-wracking on guns like this. There we go. And then that lifts up, pulls forward. You can see it's got a spring clamp in here. Sorry about all the schmutz on that, but there's a little spring clip here that locks onto the gas port, or the gas block. So inside here we have essentially a G43 gas piston, short stroke gas piston, multi-part, it's going to push back that way. That, again, I apologize for the condition of this, it's not the current staff's fault, this has been through a lot of rough times. Uh, the gas piston, or the operating rod I suppose actually, comes out here, and it's going to push the bolt backward to unlock it, unfortunately. The bolt mechanism is also missing from this rifle, so I can't show you that here. Um, however, beyond that, you have a lot of elements taken from the Sturmgewehr. You've got a, a, a rear sight tower here, 
sites graduated out to 800 meters. These sites are raised fairly high. You can see that on the front site as well. Uh, and this is, this is very much a nice inline design of gun because the bore comes in pretty much right in line with the top third or so of the stock, which helps prevent muzzle climb. Not that there's a whole lot of muzzle climb from 8 millimeter Kurtz, but uh, that contributes, contributes to it being a very pleasant shooting gun. You can see that the grip, uh, like the, the grip texturing, is is stamped directly into the body of the grip itself down here. This is left and right two parts uh, welded together, and that is um, that's not really all of a Garat 06 because I can't show you the actual roller locking mechanism because the bolt's missing. But that's what I can show you from this example. So testing of the Garat 06 begins in March of 1944, and it's going to continue through the spring and summer. By August, the German army is doing side-by-side -side comparative testing of the Garat 06 and the Garat 06H, so the gas-operated version and the roller-delayed version side-by-side. -side. And the conclusion of those tests is that the 06H is the more promising and more interesting gun, because it's simpler, it's lighter, it's better, essentially better in every way, except it has a little bit more recoil, but not so much as to really be significant. Testing continues because this is the German army and they experiment and test with everything, um, kind of ad nauseum, until November of 44. And that's when these projects, with the exception of the roller delayed gun, which continues in production, and it would have become the Sturmgewehr 45 had it had enough time to fully develop, the other guns, all of the G43 based projects, the Garate 02, 03, and 07, and the Garate 06, are all essentially cancelled in November of 1944. They're not formally cancelled, but they're deprioritized to the point that they will never have any work done on them again. The German military, the German arms industry had a smorgasbord of design projects ongoing, and the way that they tried to accommodate the realities of supply at, towards the end of the war was to put projects on different priority levels. And by the end of the war, only the very top priority projects were being allocated any resources at all. So if something like this drops to priority two or priority three, it's essentially cancelled. It's not formally cancelled, but it's never going to move forward because it has no time, no materials, no personnel assigned to it. And that's what happens to the Garret 06. So this remains sort of this little side footnote in uh, roller-delayed firearms development, where it is a fantastic gun on its own. It just happens to be outshined by its immediate sibling, the 06H that's roller delayed. So um, I believe there are two examples here, and I think two examples in the British Royal Armories. I think all four of the original guns that were made still survive today. This is number two. It is the more complete of the ones here at Springfield. The other one is basically just a receiver. So it's unfortunate that this is missing a lot of its important parts, but sometimes you only get what survives at the end of the war, and this is what we have here. So a big thanks to Springfield Armory. Uh, the National Historic Site, the National Park here, for giving me access to their collection to pull this out and show it to you guys. If you find yourself in Springfield and you have some time available, definitely come by and check out their museum. They have a really good set of exhibits on American small arms from the founding of the nation. Springfield was our first official major armory all the way through, well, through the end of the armory in the 1960s when it was shut down. Lots of cool prototypes, experimental guns, all sorts of neat stuff. So check the museum out if you can. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.